Hey, this is Tracy with Color Me This. Welcome to episode 53. This is the Brute Funer 120 Squares detailed walkthrough. I have owned the Brute Funer Squares. They were my first economy budget pencil. I had done a whole bunch of research before I bought them. I love them. I have since then gone a whole bunch of different directions. So I have done some projects from last year and then I finished one that I started last year when my parents were visiting and I have really enjoyed working with these, especially after finishing up the Crayola, which were uh, not the greatest of experiences. So I did pick the Brute, Brute Funers on purpose to have something that I knew would I would enjoy. So I have the, the they're in a case that is my temporary case and I already did a video on how I did the numbers for them. I'm going to give you a quick peek. So this again is their temporary home. I zipped off all of the paint past these teeny tiny numbers and here is one right here that you can see was the only one that I really made a fairly big boo-boo. I started too soon but immediately picked it up and then uh, moved it over a tiny bit. So these are the secondary set. They're, they are my backup set that I am preparing for my coloring group to be able to use them because my main set have a bunch of stickers on them that mean just something to me and nothing to anyone else. And I know that the more they get used by random people, uh, the more inclined those numbers will be to pop off. They are the Brother Label Maker 0.23 inch TZE tape without masking tape, and I don't want to have to masking tape them. So I prepared these to be able to get them all numbered properly. Then as I was swatching, I did actually try to use my non easy to read numbered ones and I just couldn't do it so I had to break these back out. <clears throat> what that means to me if I want to not be using these for every day I'm gonna have to zip off the the back side because this is the side that I have these other stickered numbers so that kinda makes me sad but I am very glad that I have these to play with. They are a lovely pencil I do have very bad hands and I don't find the square shape bothers my hands at all. I have spent many hours with these over the last week and a half and haven't had any issues to speak of. I find them way easier. I mean, my hands were hurting when I was getting finished with the Crayolas. So I have a few comparison pencils. There, I didn't see anything flawed with this set this still, as you can see, is the set with the Chinese lettering, which I actually really enjoy. I wouldn't mind a set with the English translations, but I just think this makes them an even more collectible, unique pencil set, which I love my unique pencils. So the cores seem centered. These do have an open no non capped back end so you can look if there if you see any issue you can look and tell whether it's centered or not when they they come they do have a square ish way of being sharpened at the factory i don't know how they managed to do that this particular pencil hasn't been sharpened because i want to let you listen to how it sharpens with the jar link. I have the older version. I know they have a new version now that replaces it, but there is a unique sound and I don't think there's any problem with that sound. So I will share that with you shortly. The colors are wonderful and we will get into the colors very soon here. They are a joy to work with. I think I'm going to put them in a 120 case that I already have the Color 120s in, so I'm gonna have to be doing some swapping around. 
This particular set is a 120. It is a black barrel, but the numbers do not coordinate with the other sets of black barrels because I own the 180 set of the colors and they do not line up. The numbers do not match. So I do have um, one of each of these, the 180 and this to do some comparisons to for core size, etc. So if I grab, I grabbed the two, well, one of the sets, the 180 colors were already out. I grabbed a 120 color and then a Marie's because I really felt after using the Marie's that the, even though the Marie's is 168 and the color is the 120, they were quite similar in feel and the and lay down. And they also, they're not as, as crayon-esque, I guess, for lack of a better term, as the color black barrels. So the black barrels, I think, are more crayon-like, and these two are, or maybe wax, and these two feel more closer to each other, the Marie's, and then the color families. Uh, the Marie's has a really good set of skin tones, and so does the Brute Funer. So when I was getting my light and dark skin tones, which you'll see the color combos, that is what came to mind. And I should also let you all know that going back to the Brute Funers, I wanted the black barrel in the Brute Funer, but everything I read said that the Calor and the Brute Funer are made in the same factory. So whether it says Calor or Brute Funer, the black barrels are the same. So what I don't own is the round full color barrels except the Brute Funer squares. So I was doing a bunch of research, checking out some stuff, and I actually ended up, just today, before, uh, earlier today, I ended up purchasing the 520 Brute Funers. I already own the 520 student grade Brute Funers, so I bought the two floral boxes, 250 each, and all of my videos that I watched and reviewed were already on my mind because I almost bought them the first time around. When I bought the student grade, I was tempted to buy the professional grade, but decided I wanted to put them on the wall. I got a really good deal on them. I can tell you that Timu now is shipping larger items uh, via ocean, so on a ship, and if they are not docking here on the East Coast. I can't buy them. And I right now, I can only get the student grade through Timu. But the price that they want for the floral boxes, even if you're on the West Coast, where I think they're going into the port in LA or somewhere over there, the price has gone up. So it was better for me to buy on Amazon. And I'm sorry I'm digressing and going off off on a tangent. So I'll probably repeat myself when they come. So the pricing though was better to buy on Amazon. I have an Amazon Chase card, so I get a discount. Uh, it's 6%, so it's 5%. And then if you opt for your Amazon day to ship, and I'm not in a hurry to get these. So I went ahead and did the Amazon day and got an extra percent back. So I got 6% back of the $99.99 that I paid, and the cheapest I found them on Timu was $89.62 or something like that. So I feel very good about my purchase, especially after having used these squares, and and I'm really excited for that next set to, to come. I'm still, I still have a backlog, as I probably always will have, so I don't know when I'll be getting to those. So again, today we are talking about the Brute Funer Square 120s. And I, I'm sorry I digressed, but I'm just very excited. Uh, first off, I got excited after using these, which made me then start watching the 520 videos. There's more than there were, you know, a year and a half ago when I was first thinking about it. Uh, there are more videos out there, so it was a lot of fun. All right, so again, these, if you compare the colors, which these 180 colors, uh, 
are branded both Calore and you can get them through Brute Funer and they have silver. The writing on the squares is a very light italic font, which is unique to me in gold because italic font is not used that very often. And this is a very delicate uh, size of lettering and stroke, which goes along with the very fine stroke of the Chinese characters, as well as the number, which is so tiny for me to read. Uh, so um, I'm glad I came up with a good way to overcome that so that I can be happy. And yes, I will probably be also changing my own set to have to zip off the paint and write on the wood directly. So I've got my calipers here and I did a pre-measurement of the core and I measured this at about 3.4 from the back side. And if we do some vertical comparisons, I hope you guys can see these. It is later afternoon so I have to have my curtains closed. The smallest one, core-wise, is the far left, which is the Calure, kind of the white label. It doesn't have Calure on it. It comes in the chameleon barrel. And then the next smallest is going to be Marie's. But Marie's is a little bit bigger. And then I'm looking at, if I set those down, the 180 reports that it's a 3.8 millimeter barrel and I can tell you that it is the biggest of the four, the biggest barrel of the four and I measured the barrel on the, the uh, Brute Funer squares at 3.4 and it's a bit of an eyeball. I suppose I could be even more accurate if I had brighter light I think it's like 3.4 is what I calipered them at when I was over in the light. Yeah, right about there is edge to edge of the diameter, I think. So, a little bit better than the Marie's, uh, not as good as the 180's. The barrel size actually is also comparable to the others. It's a really easy measurement and I can, and I'm squishing as hard as I can against the wood to get the 7.06. I think the Marie's are pretty large. Yeah, 7.4. These are the the um, Chameleon non-branded colors, and that's 7.3. Here's the 180s. 7.08. There is definitely some variation because it looks to me visually, so I'm going to do this again, because visually I feel like the 180s is a little bit wider, if anything. So let's just check this again. All right, 7.07. 7.3. Okay, that's better. That's what I was recollecting. The measurements are. And again, just to recheck 7.07 .07. so this is a svelte feeling pencil and these two no nope, these two are about the same uh, width just one is square and one is in the diameter and it's the same length this one has been sharpened with the electric sharpener I want to let you listen to the sound I've got, here is the Calure, the smaller barrel Calure. It sounds really good. It sharpens very easy. The wood is a little bit lighter colored. The Marie's sharpen really well. Because of the gloss on them to me without knowing, they kind of feel polychromos-like. They're, they're a shiny rather than a matte finish. And the finish on the Brute Funer Squares is somewhat matte. It's, it's not quite satin and it's not quite shiny. Somewhere in between. So the sound that the squares, when you first put them, this is a little bit off-center, so let's see how it sharpens. So if you look at that, that is a non-centered core. 
and I noticed that because this side there's less wood than this side it has way more wood and less of the pigment but you can hear when it first is taking the the chunks of the four because it's kind of squared off whatever machine they're using to to uh, sharpen these at the factory gives it a squarish point and the tip of it is actually somewhat flattened so the sound is a little bit of crunching as it gets rid of the squared sides there's four squared sides so I'm going to do this once again so you can listen and I don't think it's anything to be alarmed with because as soon as they it gets a round diameter the sound goes away so there you have it so they sharpen easily I had to sharpen a few before I realized that the sound is just the shape of the square um, rounding up. I want to now look at the swatches. So let's get our swatches out. Because there's some unique colors, I really want you to see. The price of this set is typically under $30. I will tell you that Amazon seems to have the best prices for this set. So 64, 13, even going into 98 and 51, all skin tones. We have these nice, very soft cream colors, 69, 90, then getting into the yellows, and then you have three yellow yellows going into the yellow orange, then a great selection of oranges into orange red, and I like this dark rust, which I pre prefer that it be here than over on the brown side of things, which is nice because the original swatch that I'm using, which I don't have the name, I might have the name. Uh, I might have to look at it look it up for you because it took me forever to find it and I really like this being here and not over in the browns. Uh, the pinks start very soft. We have actually four soft, three soft peaches, then we have this wonderful bone. 64 is a bone color that's great. 71, 11, and 70. Then going into the pinks, love 17. Lots of reds to the red oranges. I love this hot fuchsia pink. There are no neons per se, but there are some very bright colors, this being one of them, but it's almost like a, a more natural neon tone than pure neon. Uh, I do love 61 as well. Then we go into the burgundies. The purples is lacking. You'll see some notes when I did my color combos. That is what I think needs to be more, you know, they gave us more of the creams and the skin tones, but something had to give because this is only a 120 set. And if you look at the colors, they have a violet range, but not really a nice range. I like to do my combos with at least four, and I could not come up with four purples to get a nice blend, so it had to be only three. So that was... Uh, very annoying to me and I even tried adding tacking on a darker and I might have even used 85 for, I think I did end up using 85 which is technically more of a blue and I had to use that for my dark purple because there isn't a dark purple there's only these these violet colors all right so then we move on the blues were great I like the ranges of the blues I was able to do my ocean sky teal and aqua for my different colors they do have uh, a prussian blue hero 33 and as well as two dark uh, like a denim 89 and 87 is kind of sort of a, a on halfway between uh, denim and a prussian 86 was almost a purple. That was also a candidate for me to use. It has the lightest blue is 38, which is lovely. It has a lovely aqua, 56, that's light. And the greens are plenty. Look at, we have a full sheet. My greens, I love it. It's the full page, so that was very nice. 
66 could technically probably be over in the yellows, but because it does have that green tint to it, that I'm glad that it ended up there per the, the person's color chart. I did not change what they had done. Lovely browns, lots of earth tones in there. We've got a nice full range of the darks. And if you look at 31, I believe really carefully, it has, it's like a really dark, dark mulberry couple co color. And then we have a variety of grays. There could always be more, but I can see why they still had to stick with what they had and they sacrificed the purples for me, which makes me sad, but I do have lots of other sets that have purples that I can mix. These are really easy to mix with other sets. I have done that in the past, so you can easily mix and match. Uh, they work well with friends. Very nice set for uh, mixing with other sets of pencils. I have now my story about the swatching. So, oh, the swatching. I could not find this original set and I needed to swatch on my Nina new Nina Bristol vellum. So I really wanted a repeat of this as well as my swatch chart that I have standardized with everything and that is the one that has the holes, the holes punched. So because I couldn't find it and I've used Jazzy Doodle designs for her way of coloring, I saw that it had some differences but I went ahead and started it and the minute I hit 81 which I don't know if they've changed along the lines, but I can tell you that 81 over here is green and that's what it was originally when I first swatched these. So 81 was a miss and when that happened, I stopped and I started diligently looking for this particular swatch. I will try to dig up where I found that from. I probably have a note somewhere and I will try to find it for you and I'll put it in the description of the video. So when 81 popped up, I stopped and I found it. So the second time's the charm. I found the swatch. It's identical to this one on the right. It is done on my new paper, which makes me happy. And then I, because I'd already started it, I figure if I'm already doing two, what's doing three, that's not a problem. So I went ahead and finished it. And there are some issues with this Jazzy Doodle design version of the swatch chart. Uh, I prefer the one on the left much better. You know, I, I'm when I have these gaping differences here, uh, perhaps a very old version, maybe she swatched it and they've made some changes from the very beginning. I don't know but I am glad I found this swatch chart because this makes me happy. And I actually did a much better job of filling in my sections. I do, the left is full color. The, the next to it is three layers. Moving to the right, one more is single layer. And then this on the right is supposed to be burnished with a color blender, which I have not done yet. But that's what, back when I was doing these, that's what that meant to me. So now let's move along to the color combos. So the color combos, you can see that they did a great job. I'm going to grab the color combo, a couple of color combo charts to look at in comparison. And I do have notes and stars. I, I actually care so much more about this set that I do enjoy that I worked very hard to find the colors and I was using the Kalur 180 colors as my um, as my guide of which colors I wanted to do. So since I've done this, I have named this. This is uh, called Bright Two. I wanted to come with a come up with a clever name and I never did. So Bright Number Two, and I actually ordered this page. Uh, probably most consistent to what I would like to see on all of my combos that I do. Uh, here's my notes. So, square number 37. 
So up here is number 37, and it scratched my paper right here. It actually scratched the middle of sky. It's the middle tone. Notice I only did three tones for sky because ocean took the dark, and I could have added this darkest tone. But when I did this here, I noticed I kept sky from being super dark. So I wanted to be consistent like with that. So number 37 did have some wood and it scratched, which in this light, I don't see it. I tried very hard to go over it again after I fixed it. So when you do first get these pencils, if you are like me and you don't want to pre-sharpen before you touch them, you will risk having some problems with the wood because of the way they, they square off the corners when they sharpen them at the factory. So be aware of that. And then uh, the second note for leaf. Leaf is normally not this light, and I wanted to point out that this lovely number 57, which I did show you in the swatch sheet, is a wonderful light green way lighter. Look at how light that is compared to other sets that I have done walkthroughs on. So 56 was lovely, 57 is lovely. They gave us lights in almost every tone, which I've stated in the past, just like my Copic markers, you know, the, the four zeros version of every single color family of the Copic is the lightest version. It is super light. And I would love to have that and that's partially why I decided that I would buy the 520s so that I could achieve my goal of having the very lightest lights available to me, which none of these sets, even the 180 doesn't have a light as light as I would like to see in every single color. So being that Copic markers is where my coloring journey started many years ago, I'm used to having the 356 or 358 colors with a full set of the very light lights. So that makes me happy. Moving on, the next notes. Again, here, three stars. Again, lovely lights. Moss has this wonderful 115. See how dark the moss is on the Color 180s? Look at how I got to alter it and go way light because of 115 and 116. Now then, I would say, as an argument and devil's advocate, I did not find a good set of medium moss colors because you'll see I jump from 116 to 48, which is almost a gray green, where this moss is a rich green. However, now that I live in Florida, Spanish moss actually really looks very close to number 48. So I guess it depends on where you live. And then 78... I did as a black, I think that's a very dark, dark, dark green, 78, yes, 78 is a very dark moss green. Okay, palm was lovely. We have lots of palms here, and so I was glad that I could get a nice light yellow in there. Loved my bright one and bright two. They did really good. They kind of match the two brights in the Color 180s. Uh, the violet, I have notes. What do I have? Four stars. Oh, so for the violet, I was trying to smooth it out. You'll see that this violet, there's a little bit of a bumpy transition between the three, the pink to the hot pink to the purples that are the violet purples. Trying to smooth that out, I went ahead and had the white handy. So I went ahead and used the white, which we're going to look at this white compared to all the other whites that I have uh, I have swatched on black. So I loved how it worked. So I went ahead and did it again in the purples. I could not find three blendable purples because 89 is actually a navy blue. These were the only purple colors where you can definitely see that the violets have a nice range, but the purples just weren't there. Hot pink was lovely, and the light and dark skin tones were great. Uh, the 180 also did nice with the dark, light and dark skin tones. So I think that this was the only comparison. The, un the other comparison I wouldn't mind peeking at before we move on is the Marie's because I really, oh, here, it's right here. So the Marie's color combos, back when I did them, I hadn't added the all 15 or all of the squares. So there's three squares not colored. And if I ever get back to completing my combos, 
I could go ahead and go fill in the missing hot pink. There's a bright here. So there's something in here I'm missing. It's moss. So I should go back and see if I can do bright two moss and hot pink to fill in these three squares. Sometime when I have some free time. Oh, hey, and I've got this afternoon ambient light coming from my side window that makes these look so lovely. So I really think for me, the 120 squares most closely mimics the Marie's even more than how it mimicked the Colors. So let me know your thoughts if you have these. Uh, I know that Marie's is somewhat an elusive Chinese cheap not set that not everybody gets because it's not on Amazon. So uh, still a lovely set. The next thing to share is I want to do the tests. I've pre-started my test sheet. Oh, before I do tests, I want to show you my whites. This is my white comparison. I did sneak on the Color and haven't really talked about it. When I back, that's the Color 180 version. I'm gonna put 180. When I did the black swatch, I wasn't too impressed but I love to use the white. Here is the white on the toothy paper. It did not show up. I can even try again to see if I can get a little more. I'm gonna zoom you guys in closer though. So now we can do close up stuff. Sorry about the shaking, stop shaking. So, I mean, I'm able to get a little bit more. And this is the smooth smooth side of the Bristol vellum, but I, I think this is a great blender white, probably because it's not so dominant that it turns the color pink. That's why I was able to use it for doing the violet and the purple blend that I came up with. So let's go ahead and put this right here yeah, actually it, I see why it did pretty good that's a pretty decent white nice so the square has a 72 and an, a 120 and I'm gonna start looking at this as a possible uh, new colorist for my group I have been steering them to um, prangs if they're a very heavy-handed person and they're just seeming to be just want to color basic stuff and learn the the ropes uh, because it's so, they're only six dollars but I like the idea of the brute funer squares smaller set for maybe their second set because most of my people who come to class are not interested in 120. I think that's very interesting because I was immediately like, I want more, but nobody wants more. They have like 48s um, and to them 60 and 72 is a lot of pencils. So I, I'm liking the idea of pushing them to look at the Brut Funer Square 72. So I like this white. I think it looks really good and I see why I'm happy with it. Um, it's interesting that Artex is still Artex, Marie's, and Luminance of all things. I would have expected more with the Luminance. Uh, Polly is just kind of like the Marie's, maybe a shade better. So there's the Muse Museum Aquarelle. That is an awesome white. Same with the Derwent drawing. So Brut Funer, not quite the best, not up here with these three, but it's decent. And the Color, which is sitting right here, that actually was nice. I liked that. So that's the white for us. I am going to possibly pause because my, oh, my test sheet's right here. No need to pause. So I am going to just go through 
one section at a time. I'm not going to bother sitting down in my recliner. I'm going to try to power through this. And I've got my sunset colors here to use to show you uh, what the blend is like. So I am going to go ahead and grab number seven, which is a red, and I'm going to do light layering and see how well I can do. I with these, I find that I can go heavy handed. They don't require me to do light layers at all. And I can get kind of pushy with them, which is nice when I'm in a hurry. I don't find that I own many pencils that have to be light layered to get the color output. Most of what I have steered toward for my economy pencils and budget friendly ones are ones that still do a nice heavy lay down. So that was really more like one and a half because I was talking and I, it's hard for me to not fix as I go. It's the same thing when I type, I uh, type very fast on the computer because I had a job where I wrote up very large documents. And so I've always been able to type fast, but I fix it as I go. So that is just something I do. I can already tell that this, I had this is over on my clipboard and I can see some, some marks. So that's probably more like two and three. I'm still using very light pressure. I think at any time now it's going to do, it's, I wish I could explain, uh, come up with a good example of what happens with a colored pencil when it passes the point of it's like the filler fills up so much that it then just turns into this nice full color sheen. So if I push now and go a little slower, I'm always in a hurry. I should be able to fill in all the tooth with this, this next pass. So these definitely, like I mentioned, they are more like Marie's and than they are the Color Black Barrels because the Black Barrels are a crayon, uh, very heavy pigment, and I can get down a solid pass way faster than I can with these. But when they do switch to this creamy, yummy, glossy-looking, burnished um, square, it's just a lovely feeling when that happens. So I would say I almost put down six layers, but they were very pleasant layers. And I already know because I've used these pencils so much that I can go right here to this heavy layer and I can just squish on down pretty much getting a solid layer almost in one go. I might go back and forth a little bit to even it up as I go, but I still feel like I can probably in the equivalent of one and a half to two layers. So these are light layerable and, and heavy layerable. I just wish when I'm doing light layers, it would be nice if these would go a little quicker. So they're not a fast pencil by any means but they sure do feel good. They just feel, uh, they don't have a, a sticky feel at all. They're not quite as silky as say a Pablo or a Polychromos, but they just have their own really pleasant feeling that I just really like. And I would say I did that in about two and a half, which is always my goal. Um, that's not really a race. So I used the sheet from, it was a misprint. So this used to say praying. Uh, you can see I marked off the color numbers for the praying. And at the, at the end here, it put s some new stuff. I had put at number three, pushed the last things over to the other page. So I have built in fake squares. We're going to now move right along to the sunset. I have sharpened all of these for this purpose. They work, I, I would actually say that I find them a little more pleasant 
when they are sharpened but they don't have to be sharpened. You, They don't seem to have any wax buildup or anything funky. Uh, so both of my sets I have worked sharpened and not, not sharpened. I think that is just what you are used to. Uh, they will wear down their point even though they're not as soft as their um, black barrel brother, like a half brother. Uh, so they can, you can push pretty hard as you can see, that's what I'm doing here. And then they just fill in the tooth very nicely, just not quite as heavy as the black barrels do. They're just a lovely, I guess it's a pencil I'm familiar with, and so I just naturally really like them. So all of my subsequent sets that I have bought have all been compared to Polychromos and these. And probably my biggest disappointment that I had the highest expectation of was actually my Derwent Lightfast. Those are sticky, sticky pencils. And I, I'm sure that situationally I can use them for all sorts of things, but when I was just doing my familiarization with them, I was not very impressed. And of course they were very expensive. So now I'm going to start my, my blend and I'm going to stick to lighter layers with maybe this left side. Going ahead and filling that in more, but then I'm going to make sure I go nice and light. I see this yellow orange. I must have used it for something because it's not as sharp as the others are. So I had a really interesting uh, group meeting. It was an evening one and this gal came and she had a set of pranks, you know, cause I always tell everybody, if you have any pencils, whether you've used them or not, bring them all with you, bring your books and we'll, we'll see what you've got. So she had this praying 50 set. It looked exactly like mine, what I use for the lessons, except when she was using them, she goes, I'll use mine. So she starts to use them and they were not putting out any color. So I said, hey, why don't you try my yellow? And it just was way more vivid. So either the they're old and they dried out, but I don't think they should dry out, or praying in the last five years has upped their game and made their sets more pigmented. So if you guys know about that and the possibility of whether the prangs today, because they're pretty pigmented today, not, not as much as the more expensive sets, but for their price, they are very nice and pigmented and easier to use than, than Crayola. I was tempted to even do the white, white blending but I'll probably make these fill in the tooth without the white blending. I just think that's a wonderful trick. I even was doing, I think on the skin tones, I even took, you know, one of the peachy tones and went ahead and blended out the top just for fun. These are very blendable to me. It's like they're very forgiving. They will work any way you want to work them. Today it is, it was 89 degrees. It was so lovely. We've had such cold, a cold winter. And I know it's not anywhere near as cold as most everybody else, but for us, it was cold. So it was nice to actually go on a bike ride and just wear a tank top and shorts the way it's supposed to be. So see, these are just so lovely. They're just uncomplicated and just do their job very nicely, very easily. 
I am coming back across now with, I would say, medium pressure. Kind of coloring like I mean it. Now, just for, for fun, because I really want you guys to see how well this works, I see some tooth, and I could use the colors and get them all to fill in, but I also want to show you how nicely a blend burnishes with white. And of course, I'm sad because I can't buy just the white. because you can't buy these as singles. I mean, I see a little bit of the white, but it is not so heavy white that is going, going to lighten these. I don't have my brush with me. That is what our blend looks like. So easy, so lovely and pleasant. Okay, re erase test. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this electric and do some dots. I even have one one project where I did some of some patterns with the the eraser. That does very nice. I've got my black pink pearl. It's not smearing. Oh my gosh, the whole Biny race test. Wow, that was a, an experience. So these are pretty clean and easy. The kneaded eraser isn't here. I'm gonna pause because I know it's over on the other desk. All right, before I do the kneaded eraser, which I found, is right here, I'm gonna clean up with the mono zero and see how this works. I see a little staining. I am not surprised. It's a bright blue. Still does as well as all the others. Now, can I Pick up a little pigment here. Not quite as easy as some other colors, but it is working. And there you can see there's some blue. I mostly use this technique if I am lightening up an area on um, a nature or animal portrait. So I am not surprised by any of these tests. Maybe the, I would say that the kneaded needs a little more work than I'm used to with other pencils. I have a new section here. This is uh, something I use for animal portraits. I actually added this and indenting, which I'm not gonna do because any of them are gonna indent fine. You, you indent before underneath your pencil and it's good for cat whiskers. So this is actually really good for animal hair. And what this is, is you add white first, which I added, you know, the white that it comes with. And then I went over with a red, I think it was the darker red. So you'll see it's a little bit pinkish because the color, when you mix the two, you get more pink than, which is ironic because when the, you're doing white as the burnishing layer, it still keeps a pretty vibrant red. It's a little bit lighter, like I could go back over that if I wanted, but the important thing is here that if I want to do any textures, any patterns, I wanna do whiskers, this is the biggest fun secret. It is such a fun thing to do, and what I'm using is called a slice tool, and it simply has a ceramic white blade. When I use an exacto, which is an alternative, it tends to rip, rip into the paper and you have to be so careful with your pressure. But with this slice tool that has a nice rounded top, it is lovely. And I've, this particular one, they have all different kinds. They have a really small one, a small white one that makes hair, just really thin hairline lines that is just lovely. This particular one, 
wiggled. So I took part of my, that's why my kneaded eraser here is a little bit smaller because I had to take a chunk and put it on here to hold the slice tool in place, the slice blade in place so it wouldn't wiggle. So that is the tip of the day. All right, so that was wonderful, worked really well. I'm very happy, you can make any patterns you want. If you use the, the underlay of the white, you can um, just do any kind of artistic drawing that you want to do, perhaps. Uh, next is the smudge test. I went ahead and did a red and a blue. And this is just good to know. It actually smudged pretty good. Uh, yeah, so this is pretty smudgy. So yeah, this is where if, you're, if your skin and your drawing and your palm is in the way, I'm left-handed. Uh, I might want to consider glassine, which I always have handy. Uh, so that tells me this is a pencil pretty typical that it'll need a little bit of uh, protection. And then the next thing is the water test. Okay, water. I like to put the water on and smear it around a little bit to see if I can then move. Wow, okay very little water movement. Look at that. Well, that is good to know. Hmm. I expected a lot more movement than that. That's very good. I have a blending stump. I thought I had a blending stump. I'm going to skip that and move on to a blender pen that's sitting right here. This is my tried and true, very old Stampin' Up blender pen. Don't know if it's alcohol or something else. It tells me what it doesn't have in it. It says, it is acid free and xylene free. That's all I know. It has been around my desk forever. So we're going to see, I purposefully have left some tooth showing. I did a video where I filled it all in. And then when I moved around these various tools, I did nothing because it was already, already uh, fully filled in with no tooth showing. So that was nice. There's a lot of pigment on here. I have a, the blender pencil of the day. I don't have my Fulbright, but I do have a Prismacolor colorless blender. So let's use that. This isn't quite as silky feeling as the Caran d'Ache full blender, but this is working really nicely. Yeah, that's doing a good job. Now I can delay no longer. I need to go drum up a, a blending stump. I will be right back. All right, I found a blending stump. It has red on it. I don't know if you guys have seen the sanding block. You can see I have cleaned many stumps. And you can just make it whatever shape you want. This does not work in a sharpener. At least I have had no luck. So now all of the color is mostly gone. All right. So let's see how this works. This is my least favorite. It feels very dry. It is not tactically pleasing. It's not as scratchy as some other tools and other pencils, but I still is not, it's not a favorite. And it tends to leave the pigment kind of white looking like it had been burnished with white, but it does do its job. So, moving on to burnishing. 
Um, we already saw pretty much this is burnishing with heavy pressure, but we will show it again. Yeah, there's just something about the way these feel that I really love. They just have a really nice feel to them. And they don't make any noise. It's like they're a stealth pencil or something. So that is my favorite way to burnish. And then the second is to burnish with white. And then this square, I just got a little exuberant and made an extra white, I mean an extra red square for no reason. So I've already done quite a bit of both of this type of burnishing, and I like them both. This is making the red pinker, which it's going to do. So what did we learn? I learned that the these do not move with water, which is crazy. It does not smear when you erase. You can definitely use the white to burnish. And I add, so I think it's amount of pigment. I added like three quarters of the required pigment where down here maybe was half. And if you get almost done and you just want to really blend it out and make it nice and smooth, just put some white on. Uh, lots of layers, more than normal with the light layering. Um, I tend to, with these pencils, I use a mix of the light and heavy where there's other pencils that I do only light though I don't really have a lot of pencils that require it um, they all seem to have a good pigment and yeah that's it very good on the tests uh, the last thing to share are projects that I have done the uh, I just purchased this this was part of my small haul for my February haul. I am figuring out a good schedule to be able to go through this book. My first coloring book, Coloring In, going start to finish perhaps. So the very first thing I did was color the inside front cover. I do have a log of the colors I used on this, so I will put them on my blog. There will be a link to my blog on in the description and I was thinking of doing some fun things with the stars, but I haven't done that yet. So this way you're just looking at the pencils themselves. And I might go through and do some extra glitter stickles, neon gel pens, that kind of thing uh, at a later date. Easy, easy to do, very quick. So the next projects, these are very old, uh, maybe three years old. This was a Chris Chen How to Color an Eye, and I used my first set of pencils that have the Prisma colors, and the combinations were a little bit challenging because I didn't own, at the time, the macarons. There, I didn't have the basics and the macarons, so now that I have three sets to make up the full set of Prismas, uh, this eye would have come out better. I really liked it, uh, and I have a thing about eyes. Someday I will share why. I don't, some people may know uh, if they know me in person. So I also did these two butterflies with the intent of having all of the butterflies colored. So this purple is the Brute Funers. You can see I did the Pegasus in purple. Purple, even though green is my favorite color, I tend to like, if I'm doing monochromatic, I like to use purple. So those are very old projects. <clears throat> I have the one that I started last year when my parents were visiting, and I finished it. I'm probably going to have to back out my camera a little bit so you can see the whole thing, because it is a full pager. And here it is. Alas, I'm not going to be able to give you all of the, sorry I'm shaking, all of the pencil numbers, because I didn't keep track of them from last year. And then I've put all of them back. They were the ones that were very hard to read, so I put them away and brought out the new set and used the new set to finish up, 
finish it off. And what was left was part of this turtle. Um, I had the head done and the back, the shell, but I didn't have the circles. And then I had to do the fins and the tails. And then I did had to do the the urchins, sea urchins. And I do think I'm going to do some more fun stuff with this. I'd like stickles on the white. And I would like stickles on the little round dots on the coral. And if you look closely at the fins, I did take the uh, electric eraser, my F-mat, and I put in some patterns. And I might go ahead now, uh, when I get back to it, I'll go ahead and do some white accents to further accentuate, you know, like a texture on the, the little fins uh, to show you guys how fun it is to add extra textures. Whew, so that's it. I have finished. Let's see, how long has it taken? One hour and three minutes. And there's a couple of points I had to get up that I didn't stop the camera. So I always try to do these in an hour. I hope I didn't miss anything. These pencils are just awesome. And it makes me very excited for the 520. It's because of playing with these that I went, you know what? I have had the 520s, the nicer ones, in the flower boxes on my wish list forever. I am just going to go ahead and do it. It does mean for my entire haul for March, my budget is totally blown because I also had to buy a giant case. And that's coming as well. I think it's going to take a little longer because I did find a good deal on Timu for it. Uh, so let me know your thoughts. I would love to know if you know of these pencils, if you have used them, whether you really think they are as special of a pencil as I think coming back after not having used them and using a whole bunch of other pencils uh, in the last year. I still think that these are right up, up as one of my favorites. So do all the YouTube things. I am growing my channel, so it would be great if you could share this link with your coloring friends as well as likes because likes will get me on more search results to get more visibility and i'll see you on the next one and as always thanks for watching